What up, everybody? It's Dylan here this morning. We are doing the Sly Fox secondary air injection pump bypass. So super easy. If you are on the forums, you probably have heard of this. It's a Sly Fox 75 kit. Um, it's a little package. All it is is a relay. So in the box, we got some zip ties. We got some connectors, some Velcro for the relay. Super easy. All this kit does is it actually bypasses your secondary air injection pump. So on startup, it's used to pump air into um, your emission system to warm everything up. So we're going to bypass that so the valves don't get stuck and we have to do a massive repair, which is in the thousands of dollars. So instead, we're going to do this. I don't have any issues. I'm doing this more as a preventative measure. So I've kind of read through the instructions. I've looked at a few videos. Pretty much the premise is we're going to take off the fuse box or open up the fuse box. We're going to find the purple relay put some wires back to the prongs, wire that around the top, probably in line with my ditch lights. In this little thing, there's gonna be a wire and we are gonna use that wire to splice into the new relay. Should only take 10 minutes. I'm just gonna read some stuff and get back to you guys. All right, so I got my fuse box pulled out <clears throat> and then I have the instructions here for so first thing, open the fuse box and locate this purple starter relay. Da 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 da, that is this sucker. I pulled it out with some pliers. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the wires and I'm going to wrap them around each blade, not touching the copper element. I'm going to return once I've done that. I have the purple relay and so I've actually just twirled these around so I'm not touching the copper and they are not touching each other. And so this is going to go get inserted into the female ends of the relay. And so my hope is that this will actually make a better connection than me manually putting it down there. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure that and I'll let you know how it works. All right, so next step, I took the Velcro pads. I'll show you what I did here. <laughs> uh, that one came off the bottom. But I just took this, press it down, kind of in the spare space here. And then it just mounts in there so all the connections are good. This is into the relay, nice and tight, not going anywhere, it makes a nice little click. And then we have this wire, which is gonna go all the way to the math line. So this is gonna go up top. I'm gonna to close my fuse box here. Probably gonna do a little zip tie just around here to make it nice and clean. Um, and then we will continue. All right, all I did was take this wire straight to the fuse box, go towards the firewall. There's a little thing there. I don't even know what that's for. But um, it's like a bracket. Anyways, I just zip tied it to there for now. As you can see, my hitch lights are all over the place as well. But I have it coming over here. Boom. And then if we read the next step, it says locate the flux conduit coming out of the math. That is this. Um, blah, 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 blah. Also, each of these five wires are numbered on the back. Blah, 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 blah. So you look here. We need to find the fourth wire. Look at this. Look how cool Toyo it is. Or don't because my camera's out of focus. Anyways, right on here it says five, four, three, two, one. The yellow and black wire is wire four. So we are going to get into the conduit here. I need to split it open, find the black yellow wire. I'm gonna cut it in half and then I'm gonna splice in these two wires and we are gonna have a little party. BRB. All right, so I found the black and yellow wire and then I have my posi connectors. If you've never used these, you are like me. I usually just solder, but I'm gonna try using these just for the sake of this video. And so I'll show you how they work. So this is a posi connector, at least one type of them. And so I take it and I unscrew. Then I would take the wire and I would thread it through the butt and through out here. And then once it's out, I would just reconnect it here. So one side, you would reconnect, it pinches in the middle which is a contact, then I take the other side, same as that way, push it through the butt, into the middle, once it's out, squeeze it, and that's gonna make a secure connection, and we're just gonna tighten them up, and it's gonna be safe. You can always electrical wrap it just for tidy purposes, that's probably what I'm gonna do here. All right, and now to show you guys what it actually looks like on the truck, so I have the one end of my long connector here, this is coming from the relay, I have my posi connector, the butt end has gone on first, as you can see, and then I'm going to take the butt end of this, making sure that all of that jazz is connecting within the connector there. It's looking pretty good. And then we're just going to go and twist her on. Pull. That's not going anywhere. 
Yep, I'm pretty sure that is touching the contact because when it comes down, the threads actually pinch the wire against the central contact. And so now, my next step, you probably already guessed it, I'm going to take off this side and I'm going to undo it. And then I'm going to cut the wire here and I'm going to connect one end into here. All right, guys, so now I have cut my yellow and black wire. Everyone gasp and freak out. Oh my goodness, what's he doing? His chart's never going to run again. Psych, it will. Wow. And so this wire is the one you're supposed to cut. If you have a forerunner, it is yellow and black. Once again, the number four connection on the map, you can see them labeled. And so I've gone ahead and cut this, and then I have about a quarter inch on each side of exposed copper wire. I've just twisted it nice, taken one side of the posi cap, I'll do the closest one first here. Slit her on nice. I have my long wire here. Take that on, make sure it is touching the insides, which it is. And now I'm gonna thread it on nice. Nice and tight, get a good crimp on it. Perfect, beautiful. And you guessed it, just like we just did, take off this cap top. Put it somewhere where we don't lose it. I almost lost it. Back on the other side, grab the cap top. Slide on the butt first. These are being a little bit stubborn to get in. I just need to give them a good old twist. That's what she said. All right, there we go, it looks great. Slide it on, beautiful. Make sure all the wires are connecting to the metal in the center of the cap, and they are good, nice and tight. Boom. Test it, nothing's coming apart, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and plug my math back in. I just unplugged it to give myself a little bit more room as I did everything. Slide this sucker back in. I'm gonna push this back into the conduit and be right back. All right, guys, so I just cleaned up all the conduit here, so I have this routed back into the original place. I just taped this. I have this really roughly taped. It doesn't need to be taped. I just did it anyways. And then the uh, two connectors are just under here, and then it goes in here. I routed it up to there. I have one little zip tie back there. That big wire on top is just my ditch lights. I need to probably do that a little bit nicer. I'm just waiting till I get a few more lights, and then gonna do some switches and custom routing. But as you can see, follows here, down there, back into the relay box. Everything is good to go. I'm gonna start it up for us, make sure there's no lights. Keep in mind I do this as a preventative uh, measure here, so I didn't have any issues to begin with, but let's start her up anyways. Sounds good, must be good, hey? Go show you the inside. I do have a custom exhaust, that's why it is like this. Everything is looking good, sounds good, sounds healthy. No shorts or anything, we should be good. Awesome, one second. Turn that sucker off. Sweet! So if you follow those directions, everything should be good to go. Totally bypasses the secondary air injection system. Um, if you want this kit, like I said before, Sly Fox, he's on a lot of the Toyota forums. Um, I believe I found him on toyota4runner.org. Super awesome site. You can send him a direct message there. Even if you just Google Sly Fox Forerunner, you'll come up to one of the forums. Super easy install, super friendly dude. Jeff was really easy to work with getting this shipped up to Canada. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask him, you can ask me, I can help with some installs too. So yeah, if you like this video, give it a like, share it to your friends, whatever you want to do. Anyways, guys, see you later. If you like this video, feel free to check us out on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube.